Hi, I'm Lene Folgers and I work as a call coordinator at the ERC. And in this video, I will walk you through some important things to consider before you apply for an ERC grant. And also how to get you started with the application process. So why and when would you apply for an ERC grant? An ERC grant offers independence and recognition. You can research a topic of your own choice and choose your own team. You'll have true intellectual and financial autonomy for up to five years. It will help you negotiate the best working conditions, attract the best team members and collaborators, and increase your visibility within your institution and in your broader research community. Writing an ERC application does take a lot of time and effort. We understand that ERC calls are very competitive and you may think you don't stand a chance. However, this is why it's even more important that you start your reflections early if you believe you have an ambitious research idea. While not everyone can be successful in their first application, applying means that you will receive reviews and critiques from international experts on your research idea. In addition, we have strong evidence that we applicants have a higher chance of being funded. If you believe you have a groundbreaking research idea which can help move your field forward, an ERC application is really worth the effort. It will help you think more strategically about your research and the questions and the challenges that are most important to you. So let's see how to get you started. Knowing what you're getting into is very important. So to inform yourself, just go to the European Commission's Funding and Tenders portal, search for ERC and find the call page. Here you should first download the information for applicants document. This gives you specific guidance on how to fill out the administrative form and how to write up the proposal itself and complete your submission. I know it's not the most exciting document to read, but it really does give you all of the advice and guidance you'll need. Second, you create a draft proposal by clicking on the submission button in the core page. Third, once you've created your draft proposal, please open the administrative form by clicking on edit. There are about 15 pages to fill, so don't wait until the last moment to complete it. Finally, you download the proposal templates. They're available via link in the submission page as a zip file, which contains all the templates you need to write up your proposal. Please register on the portal early, which means well in advance of the deadline. Our calls are open for submissions three months in advance of the submission deadline. Then talk to your institution's grant office. Many institutions can provide you with a lot of help and put you in touch with people who've already won a grant with us, and they may give you feedback on your draft proposal. The host institution also needs to sign a statement of their support for your application. The host institution support letter is part of your application, so you shouldn't ask for their signature at the last minute. Also, speak to your national contact point for the ERC. These are people appointed by the national authorities to provide you with information and guidance to help you apply for our grants. There are at least one in every EU country and in the countries associated to Horizon Europe, as well as in some countries outside of Europe. Search for your NCP at the Funding and Tenders portal to find their name and contact details. There are lots of other sources of advice and guidance which you can access and you can even contact ERC directly. We have a dedicated applicant's mailbox for each call, and we're ready to answer any question you may have when preparing your application. You can choose any host institution as long as it's located in the EU or in an associated country. You can change it at any point during the project's lifetime, but it's important that before you apply, you define what's going to be your position once you get the grant, the equipment the host institution will provide, what administrative support and what access to infrastructure you'll get. Better sort these things out before you apply because you'll have to include them in your proposal. There is a rumor that the quality or reputation of the host institution will impact on your chances of getting a grant. This is absolutely not true. The host institution is not an evaluation criterion 
And as I just mentioned, you can move with your grant to a new host institution at any time during the course of your grant implementation. There are four ERC grant types, starting, consolidator, advanced, and synergy grants. The starting, consolidator, and advanced grants are individual grants that target each a different research career stage. To apply as a starter or consolidator, you must have been awarded a PhD or an equivalent doctoral degree. The advanced and synergy grant calls are open to all researchers and synergy grants are open to small groups of two to four PIs who wish to work together on a joint ambitious research question. For starting and consolidated grants, there is a window of eligibility after your PhD, which is calculated from when you defended your PhD until the 1st of January in the year of the call. Extensions of eligibility are possible for a number of life events. These include maternity, paternity and parental leave, any national service or medical specialty training, but also any disability or long-term illness suffered by yourself or a close family member. Finally, if you've had to seek asylum or were a victim of major disaster or violence that impacted your ability to work, you can also request an extension. There's no limit to the total number of years of extension that you can ask for. During the evaluation, we also ask that the panels pay special attention to applicants with career breaks or unusual career paths. You may ask yourself, when is the right time to apply? The short answer is, the sooner the better. Applicants who wait until their final year to apply do not have a higher success rate than applicants who are earlier in their research career. But there may be some key points which may be worth for you to consider. When you write your application, try to strike a balance. Make your proposal ambitious, but not overambitious. After all, you have to plan for up to five years. Think of convincing supporting data or other relevant grounds for your idea. But do not wait too long collecting all the preliminary data and then risk losing the novelty of the idea. Be bold, but think about feasibility and making one or more plan Bs. Speak to your peers and talk the details out and then go for it. Many applicants wait until the end of their eligible window to apply, believing that they will be more senior and more competitive. I think this is one of the most heartbreaking misconceptions because very often the feedback from the panel, if you're unsuccessful the first time, will help you improve your application and help you win a grant when you reapply. If you leave it until the last year of your starting or consolidated grant window, you may run out of time to apply again. Many of our successful grantees failed when they first apply. Our statistics show that the success rate is equal throughout most of the eligibility window for starting and consolidated grants, except perhaps for the very first year. So please do not wait if you consider that you have a brilliant idea that will help push your field of research forward. An evaluation panel is composed of experienced researchers who will assess your proposal. The panel members act as generalists, which means that they cover all research fields of the panel, but they are not specialists in the topics of each and every application. Panels are supported by additional specialists in evaluating the applications that go to step two. Choosing the right panel is important because, after all, you want the right experts to evaluate your project idea. You will find the ERC panel structure in the Information for Applicants document. Each panel has a list of keywords that will help you choose your target panel. If you find that your project idea spans across two panels, you may indicate a secondary panel in the administrative form and then explain the interdisciplinary nature of your proposal on the front page of your proposal part B1. This will help the panel chair decide if cross-panel reviews will be needed to cover all the signs in your proposal. Once you've chosen a panel, you will target your proposal to that audience. If you choose the wrong panel by accident, or if your proposal is better evaluated by the expertise present in another panel, we will redirect your proposal to a different panel. And such transfers are relatively rare, and the chairs of both panels must agree in the event of a transfer from one panel to another. The panel descriptors can change from year to year, so even if you're a returning applicant, make sure that you check the descriptors carefully. Some people speculate in choosing their panel strategically in order to increase their chances of success. 
But I would like to debunk the myth that some panels have a higher success rate than others. In fact, the success rate is the same across all evaluation panels because the funding budget is given to each panel as a function of the budgetary demand of the proposals assigned to that panel. So my advice is just choose the panel where you think that the panel members will be most excited to read your idea. And in case of doubt, you may consult the ERC project database to learn about the projects that were selected by a given panel in previous years. With your proposal, you'll have to include descriptors and free keywords for your project. This may sound trivial, but they're used to allocate your proposal to the right evaluators. They'll also determine whether we will ask for input from another panel. So think about them carefully. Unlike what some may think, panel descriptors do not represent ERC scientific priorities. They just serve to explain the expertise covered by each panel. Many proposals come to us with no descriptors, with no free keywords. Please help us to help you Give us the information that will help us allocate your proposal to the right evaluators. In the administrative part of your application, called Part A, you will have to prove that you've thought about all the points I've mentioned so far. You'll have to provide administrative information about your project, your career, your host institution, and also how you plan to administer the budget of your project. You should make sure that you have all the important documents that are needed and I'd advise you to ensure that you have these well before the closing date of the call. These documents are 1. The statement of support from your host institution. 2. A copy proving the date of your PhD defense or its equivalent. 3. Any documents needed for us to assess your request for an extension of the eligibility window. 4. Any explanatory information on ethical or security issues. And finally, the proposal, part B1 and B2. You should be aware that the panel members only see the proposal part B1 and 2, which we will talk about in another video. They will not see any annexes that you may submit, so make sure to include all information you wish to be assessed by the evaluators in your part B1 and 2. And make sure that your proposal is complete for the administrative parts so that we don't risk excluding you from the evaluation on administrative grounds. I'm coming to the end of this video. Hopefully by now, you're familiar with some of the questions to ask yourself before applying to avoid making common mistakes and to make your life easier with the administrative part of your application. Now, all that's left is the hard work of developing and explaining your project idea. So thank you for tuning in. And if you're curious about our other parts of the application and evaluation process, check out our other ERC classes and I wish you the best of luck with your application. Or as we say in Danish, Hello Lykmedin Ansuni.